Hey, let us talk about mythology again. This time, about the Egyptian mythology. But before we are getting started, please like and subscribe. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. Beginning with the origin of the world. In the very beginning, there was nothing but a massive, chaotic ocean. Then, out of this chaos, something incredible happened. Ben Ben. A giant pyramid-like mound emerged. Sitting on Ben Ben was a lotus flower, and when it bloomed, the god Ra was born, bringing light into the world. Ra wasn't done yet. He created the first gods, Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of rain. Together, they dove into the waters of the universe to explore. When Ra noticed they were gone for too long, he got worried and sent his best messenger to find them. Luckily, Shu and Tefnut made it back, and Ra was so happy that humans were born from his tears. Later on, Shu and Tefnut had kids of their own, Geb, the god of the earth, and Nut, the goddess of the sky, and with that the sky and the earth were created. Ra ruled everything as the first pharaoh, blessing Egypt with sacred animals like the ox and the lion. But his biggest gift? Of course, the Nile River. Around its shores, humans built a civilization, honoring the gods. However, Ra had a premonition that his grandchildren would challenge his reign, so he forbade Geb and Nut from having children. But they didn't listen and gave birth to some powerful offspring anyway. Isis, Nephthys, Seth, and Osiris. And these new gods dethroned Ra, with Osiris taking over as the new ruler. But not everything was peaceful. Seth wasn't thrilled about this and had his sights on power. After dethroning Ra, Osiris took over and married the goddess Isis, beginning a reign of prosperity. Under Osiris, humans learned how to farm, weave, and make bread. He also established laws, bringing order and helping civilization flourish. But there was trouble brewing. Osiris' brother, Seth, who ruled the barren desert lands, was jealous of Osiris' fertile kingdom. Things got worse when Osiris had an affair with Nephthys, Seth's wife, and they had a son, Anubis, the god of the dead. Furious, Seth plotted his revenge. He invited Osiris to a feast, where he offered a beautiful coffin to whoever could fit inside it perfectly. And of course, Osiris tried it and Seth slammed the coffin shut, trapping him inside. Then he tossed it into the Nile, drowning Osiris. Heartbroken, Isis won so much that her tears flooded the Nile. She and Nephthys searched for Osiris' body, but when they found it, Seth chopped it into 42 pieces and scattered them across Egypt. With the help of Anubis, Isis collected the pieces and mummified Osiris. Using her divine powers, she even resurrected him. But Osiris could now only rule the underworld. Before Osiris departed, he and Isis had a son, Horus, who vowed to take back the throne from Seth. Seth had killed Osiris and taken the throne for himself, unleashing a reign of terror. But Osiris and Isis' son, Horus, was destined to bring light back to Egypt and reclaim the throne. The gods gathered to decide who should rule, Horus or Seth. Meanwhile, the two gods began their epic battles. Seth had Ra's fate because he protected the sun god from the chaos serpent. Apophis, during his nightly journey through the underworld, Seth even challenged Horus to turn into a hippo and stay submerged for three months. Horus relied on his mother, Jesus, to take advantage of Seth's vulnerability and defeat him. But 
Jesus felt sympathy for Seth and couldn't bring herself to kill him, which enraged Horus. In his fury, Horus attacked his own mother, cutting off her head. Thankfully, the god Thoth saved her, replacing her head with that of a cow. The battles between Seth and Horus rage on for years. Seth even managed to gorge out Horus' eyes, but with the help of Hathor, the goddess of love, Horus' vision was restored. Eventually, after 80 long years, the gods declared Horus the rightful ruler of Egypt, ending Seth's reign. Seth's punishment? He was condemned to travel with Ra in a sunboat, where his angry roars could be heard as thunder. But Ra, once the most powerful god in Egyptian mythology, had grown old and decided to retire to the skies. Depicted with the body of a man and the head of a falcon, Ra rode across the sky in a sunboat every day, bringing light to the world. But when night fell, Ra and his boat sunk into the underworld, where he had to sail through twelve gates, each representing a different region of the underworld. Every night, Ra was attacked by the hell servant Apophis, who tried to destroy his boat and bring eternal darkness. Once, Apophis even managed to swallow Ra's boat, causing a solar eclipse. But Ra fought back, and eventually, Apophis coughed him up again, restoring the light. Seth, having lost his throne to Horus, was now Ra's protector in the underworld. Together, they fought off Apophis, ensuring that Ra's journey to the underworld remained safe. Ra was worshipped throughout Egypt, especially in the city of Heliopolis. His influence was so great that other gods were often merged with him, like Amun Ra and Atum Ra. Even pharaohs like Ramses named themselves after him, declaring themselves son of the sun. Anubis, the jackal headed god, was one of the oldest deities in Egypt mythology. Though originally the god of the underworld, his role was later given to Osiris, with Anubis becoming the god of embalming and mummification. Priests even wore jackal masks during mummification rituals to honor him. Anubis was also the protector of tombs, making sure the dead were safe in the afterlife. He played a key role in the judgment of souls, weighing the hearts of the dead against the feather of truth. If a heart was heavier, it was full of sin and the soul would be devoured by that terrifying creature, Amit. But if the heart was lighter, Anubis would guide the soul to Osiris and eternal life. In the Greek and Roman eras, Anubis was associated with Hermes, the guide of souls in Greek mythology, leading to the creation of hybrid god Herm Anubis. Today, Anubis remains one of the most iconic gods of Egyptian mythology. And finally, Bastard, the goddess with the head of a cat, was one of the most beloved deities in ancient Egypt. Egyptians adored cats because they kept their food safe from rodents and scared of dangerous snakes. As a result, cats were seen as sacred, and harming them was punishable by death. Bastard was associated with the sun, and during the day, she accompanied Hera on his journey across the sky. But at night, she transformed into a fierce protector, guarding the world from Apophis, the cow serpent. So, cats were so revealed in Egypt that they were often mummified, and special cemeteries were built for their remains. Bastard was sometimes linked to Sekhet, the lioness goddess of war. In some stories even, Bastard was Sekhmet's tamed, gentle form, while in others, they were sisters. Even though the worship of Egyptian gods has long since ended, cats today 
still seem to expect humans to recognize their divine nature. Thanks for watching.